One of the fabrics that we found at Must Farm is twining. Um, twining is a, a different sort of fabric from textiles and I want to explain a little bit about that. So on the whole twining is something we're not very familiar with because we really don't encounter it today. But in the Bronze Age and from the early Bronze Age throughout that whole period in Britain, people were using twined fabric. Twining is made with um, two different sets of elements. Um, and we talk about these elements being the, the passive elements, so those that are um, kept in one place, passive, and the active elements. Um, and these are the, are the threads that are worked uh, across those passive elements. And in twining, this is a really interesting formation because we have, um, we have our, our passive elements. We might talk of those being the warp. Um, and these will be you know, li lined up um, next to each other. But the active element, the, the weft, if we, if we want to call it the weft, is unusual in that there are sort of two wefts. And rather than in weaving, the weft will go in and out. In twining, there are two of these um, wefts and they twist around each of the um, passive elements. So you have sort of two balls of yarn and you sort of twist these around each of the passives. And this holds those passive elements in place. So it holds the, what we might call the warp, the passive elements in place. And this is an example of that twining. So it's quite a, it's a very versatile fabric. And actually that's something that we find at Must Farm. So these active elements that sort of twist across, these, these two yarns twisting across. In this example, you can see there's two rows of those. And you can see they're quite spaced out. They're about three and a half centimeters apart. And so th this is creating a, a fabric with very few elements going across, but it holds it together as a fabric. This example, uh, my colleague Margarita Glaber's analyzed this find, and this one is made from lime tree bust. Um, and you can see, I think in the picture, you can see that this is, is a, a much bigger scale. It's a, a coarser sort of fabric than, than some, some of the textiles, or certainly than the textiles we're looking at. And also the, the yarns have been processed differently. The, these are not twisted um, when they're used in, in these um, passive elements. They're just, they're just worked straight. So they've been extracted from the tree, um, pro lightly processed, made into these um, passive yarns and then worked across. But these, these don't have that sort of twisting construction um, technique. It, this we call an open twining. So if it was close, close twining, these active elements be very tight together and it would become quite a stiff fabric. But actually we don't find any, any examples of that at Must Farm. It's just this example of open twined um, fabric. But there are variations of the um, twined fabric. And this is where into those active elements, uh, the people working the fabric have added tufts of material and we call that pile. So here's an example of the twining with with pile. There's only a few examples of those pile remaining. Here you can see them, they loop up like little tassels. They're worked through those, those active elements. Um, at Must Farm, all the fabrics we have are in fragments. So some of them are very small fragments, uh, some of them are, are larger fragments, and that's true of both the textiles and the twinings. And so from fragments, you know, what can we understand about how something's used? Um, because obviously it'd be very exciting to know if people actually wore these as clothing or if they were hanging them from the sides of the house or using them for bags. But that, that's not something we directly understand at Must Farm because they're, because they're in these small fragments. Um, so then we have to think about the type of materials and where else these were being uh, used in the Bronze Age, how else, you know, more broadly we can understand them. And the, the twine fabric is is difficult for us to understand because it's not something we're used to at all. Um, and the fibres that they're made from, these tree bass fibres, are something that if we work and process, you might think of these as being quite coarse. They can also be quite soft, actually, especially if they're worked from 
um, slightly younger uh, trees and branches or the, the outer finer rings of those fibre bundles. But it's, it's certainly a fabric that we're, if we were to handle it, um, it we, we'd think of this more in that basketry category of materials. But these are being created as sort of floppy sheets of materials. So they're still sort of those, those fabrics. This is from what we can understand. And I think really this is maybe one of the areas where the Bronze Age is different to today that these coarser fabrics were certainly part of what people were used to as the the materials in their everyday life which is exactly what we understand at Must Farm. Quite what they're using them for um, we're not sure but a whole there's a whole range of items they could be. All sorts of different um, containers we could think of um, some of the coarser, this is actually a very uh, a nice fine example of the twining, but there are other examples that are much coarser. We can think of those as matting, um, all sorts of, um, you know, other processes might need mats for part of that production and support. Um, but we shouldn't exclude the idea that twining was also used for clothing. Um, certainly for, we could certainly think of this for for hats, um, maybe shoes, but I think we should also bear in mind that this could well have been cloaks and other garments that just, they seem unfamiliar to us today because we're used to these very soft, loose fabrics. That's that's the type of cloth culture that we have. But um, these the twined fabrics are something that, um, you know, they, they are still floppy and, and have gift. They could well have been used for clothing as well as other things. Thank you.